Hello, my name is Mary Ann Cooper. I'm a physician who's been working with lightning and electrical survivors for over 30 years. You know, one of the questions I get from so many people is why doesn't lightning just leave you a little pile of ashes because it's got so much energy and it's so hot and, and all those kinds of, of numbers that um, are out all the time in lightning stories. Well, think about it. You know, lightning is shining light in all directions when it's coming down. That takes a lot of energy. Okay. You're getting thunder. That's a lot of acoustic energy as well going out. And if lightning hits some distance from you and comes and gets you by ground, ground which causes more than half of the deaths uh, in developed countries, well, it's spreading out in all directions. So again, you're not getting the full power of that one lightning strike. It, it, you're just getting a small amount of it, okay? Well, and that's, that's why it's not a burn injury. Uh, in general, the burns that we see from lightning injuries are very minor. They're secondary from where a necklace got heated up and, and the metal got melted into your skin or a, a belt buckle, for instance, uh, caused um, burns. Um, or because the polyester shirt melted in places and caused streaking or sweat from being outside and playing baseball or something like that. The sweat turns into steam and causes kind of linear burns in the areas that you would see sweat normally, okay? So, lightning is not a burn injury. So what does it do? Well, the most immediate problem is that it causes cardiac arrest in a number of people, uh, or at least it knocks people down and you don't know if they have cardiac arrest or not. Well, if they're down and they don't seem to breathing, don't, don't waste time uh, feeling for a pulse. The American Heart Association and CPR doesn't even recommend wasting the time to do that. If you know CPR, start CPR. It can save somebody's life. An AED, automatic external defibrillator, if there's one available, has saved a number of people's lives if the, the rhythm is right for it to shock. And you don't have to be worried. The AED will tell you whether it can shock or not, and it will do the shocking for you. So you don't have to worry about trying to make a major medical decision like that. Okay. So do CPR. Call EMS. Get everybody to safety. Those are the number one things that you want to do if somebody is injured by lightning. So for people that have a cardiac arrest, CPR is essential. People may recover from a cardiac arrest. They may spend days in the ICU. They may or may not have permanent brain injury. With the brain injury that you see from cardiac arrest, it's different than the kind that you see from just lightning, which is more like the concussions that the football players are getting. Um, okay, so you can have the brain injury from that. You can have brain injury from just being knocked down, maybe being without oxygen for a short period of time. Um, certainly, the, uh, a person that may be confused, they may have amnesia for the event, Many will have a ruptured eardrum because of the concussive force, perhaps, or maybe because of lightning actually causing direct damage to the eardrum itself. Um, many will have what's called coronal paralysis, paralysis from lightning for anywhere from minutes to hours, where um, the legs or an arm or arm and legs uh, feel numb, tingly, and take a while to get back. So those are all usual things from uh, a lightning strike. 